Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Zach Hartle. Um, in this video, we are going to just cover uh, Microsoft Teams, and we're going to cover using Microsoft Teams as a, a learning tool, right? As we move into uh, an, an online digital learning, remote learning environment. So we're going to cover Microsoft Teams from the perspective of the student. So once we jump onto the PC, I'm going to pretend that I am a student, and I'm just going to show you. Uh, what you would see as a student, how you can navigate, some tips and tricks, uh, some etiquette we'll cover a little bit, uh, just things that are going to help you get the most out of using Microsoft Teams. Now, I know that if you're coming from a typical synchronous learning environment where you're used to going to class, going to campus, commuting, uh, things are going to look a little bit different right now. And there's definitely some benefits, right? There's going to be no commute. There's no issues with parking. You don't have to ride the train. Um, but there's also some, you know, difficulties. We're going to miss out on some of that social aspect where we can really get together as students and collaborate and work on different things. So as an instructor, um, we're going to do as much as we can on Microsoft Teams to make that work. Now, you're probably watching this as one of my students because I sent you this video, but this is going to be good for any student who's going to use Microsoft Teams. So maybe your instructor sent it to you to watch and that's great because at the end of the day as instructors, we just want you to be successful within the course. So if you're watching this because your instructor sent it to you, that means it's good. They want you to be successful. They want you to utilize Teams to the best of your ability. Now you're gonna be working in your house uh, now or your home and it's important that you set up you know, a quiet space with as few distractions as possible in order to get the most out of this uh, remote learning environment. You probably don't want to set up in front of a TV. Uh, you don't want lots of distractions around. So if you can find a separate room, it doesn't have to be big or anything like that, just a space where you can work and uh, attend your synchronous lectures on Microsoft Teams and do the communication portions that you have to do. Now, again, this video here, we're just going to cover uh, logging into our Office 365 account that's gonna be provided to you from your institution, uh, your institutional office account. We're gonna get Microsoft Teams, we'll download it. We'll jump in and we'll start playing with some of the different settings and statuses that we can have on Microsoft Teams. Uh, then we'll start exploring the different communication and collaboration tools. We'll cover how a meeting is gonna look and how I should operate during a meeting. We'll look at the calendar as well as class notebooks. Um, and that's about it. We're going to kind of cover just what, everything you need to know to hit the ground running when your classes start, uh, whether it be in a couple days or in a month, or maybe they started a couple days ago and you're just here for some tips and tricks. Uh, so I am really glad that you're here. I'm thankful that you're watching. Uh, personally, I'm an instructor teaching online. I have been for months now and, and it, it can be a really rewarding experience and you can get just as much or more out of it than working offline in a classroom but you just have to use the tools and resources correctly. And this is a, a wonderful opportunity to practice some of these computer skills that really employers now are looking for. I mean, I personally teach in the trades and we know that it's a lot of hands-on construction activities, but now if you're looking to move up and do a management role or something like that, these tools, you know, computer skills, these soft skills that we're using, you know, Microsoft Office, Outlook Online, using a computer are our real useful tools uh, that we can have in our back pocket and that now we can put onto a resume and things like that. So think of it as a learning opportunity more than an obstacle to overcome. Anyways, let's hop onto the PC and get into it. Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now I'm using a Windows PC, uh, but everything we're doing works just as well on a Mac. There is going to be the same functionality. Also, you want to check out, there is a uh, iOS and a Google Play app that you can download to your phone or tablets as well if you want to operate that way. But we're mostly going to be talking about the desktop version of this program, Microsoft Teams. So where I want to start is I want to start with my internet browser. So we're pretending you've never logged on. First thing we're going to do, and this is really crucial, is I want to go to my institutional office account. So I'm just going to go to office dot com now here I am on Microsoft office.com 
through the uh, school, like through your post-secondary, you have access to all of these Microsoft Office programs, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, OneDrive, Outlook, and Teams. Now, depending on your instructor, you're going to use all of them, none of them, some of them, right? The one we're focusing on today is Microsoft Teams. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sign in to this account. Now, of course, this is going to be your student email uh, and your student password, which you should have gotten some details on how to get that. And if not, just reach out to your instructors if you can and talk to them on how to log in. Uh, I'm using a uh, student test account. So Michael All right, so Michael Faraday, our favorite, uh, one of our favorite electrical students. And we're going to sign in. And you can stay signed in or not, up to you. So this opens up your uh, Microsoft Office uh, home page. So now here you can see on the left is all of your different apps, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneDrive, OneNote, SharePoint, Teams, and Sway. Lots of different stuff. Um, you can actually install this suite, the Office suite, right to your computer, Mac or PC. You can just click Install Office and you can install the full desktop versions of these apps to your computer, right? So you paid your student fees. Here you go. You get Microsoft Office for free. Uh, a few big ones that where you should probably like to use is OneDrive and Outlook. Good place to store your files, um, right? Let's take a look at Outlook really quick before we jump into Teams. You can see I haven't logged in too much. There's a whole bunch of emails I already have. Oh look, Electrical School. I've been added to a team and I've been at, invited to all these courses. I can even go into my calendar in Outlook. And I can see my upcoming classes as well. I can switch the view to week is my preferred view. You know, next week I have an orientation and a couple different classes. And I can go into these and I can see information. Am I going? Yes, I'm going. Uh, maybe there's going to be more info. I can join it directly from here and it'll open up Microsoft Teams. Right. So just some cool stuff you can see there. Up in the top left is what we call the waffle. That's how you can go back to the and get into any of the other apps. So we're here today to talk about Teams. So I open up Microsoft Teams. Now I can do all of this directly on the web, right? I can use the web app and attend classes, chat, do all that. I'm going to suggest and recommend that you get the Windows app. So you download the Windows app to your computer or if you're on a Mac, download the Mac app. The desktop version works way better. It's got a little bit more functionality. It's going to run a little bit smoother. Uh, you're not relying as much on the browser. So I'm going to click get the Windows app and download it to my computer. Thanks for downloading. Starts downloading all that. I'm going to launch the program and install it. So here we go. Now I've installed Microsoft Teams and it pops here onto my desktop. So I'm going to open it up. It is going to ask you to log in again. So I'm going to use the exact same login that I logged in with online. Right, it's going to ask you to allow your organization to manage the device. If you download the rest of the Office suite, this will log you in on all of them and kind of keep them all in sync with each other. Or you can just choose it to sign into this app only. Whatever works for you. Uh, if you do download the rest of the suite, just allow the organization to manage your device and it'll work well for you. So then we get Microsoft Teams. We open it up. So a few things we see here. Uh, pop up a couple windows. It's your first time. Hey, enjoy the team. Beautiful. Going to give you a quick walkthrough. I'm going to give you this walkthrough so you don't have to worry about it. Awesome. 
So now, here on the left-hand side is all of our main different categories that we can access. So let's start with talking about teams. So each different course that you're in or each different class that you're in is going to be a different team. So here I am. Here's my electrical school team. Now you could have separate ones for different courses uh, in the program we're in. We're all within one. Now it shows like this. You can come up here to the settings and you can switch the view. I prefer this list view uh, where it shows it all on the left hand side as a list. And if you're going to be staring at this screen all day long, you can also go into a dark mode, a little bit easier on the eyes. But for this, we'll just keep it in that standard. All right, so here I am in list view. Uh, within that electrical school team, here underneath, these are called channels. So we see a general channel, a code channel, a student cafe, and a theory channel. So... Um, what I want here, you know, we have a couple different things. Your general channel is going to be for general chat. I can see here there's already a meeting scheduled for Monday at 8 a.m. Um, the student cafe is one I want to talk about for a minute. Now, personally, in my courses, I built this student cafe. This is the place for you as a student to go and collaborate and talk to and work with other students, right? We know our instructors aren't available, you know, every night at 9 p.m. or 2 in the morning or Saturday morning. But the rest of the class may be working online. So this student cafe is a good place to go for that. So let's stop here for a second. We're in electrical school in our student cafe channel. Now we can see here uh, what the screen looks like. Now a couple things that are of note in this channel. Uh, this up here would be called a conversation. So we can see Joseph Henry said, hey, Michael Faraday. Oh, that's me. Do you remember when the homework was due? I can reply to Michael directly there. I don't want to start a new conversation down here if I'm talking directly to Joseph. So I'm like, oh, yes, I, I do. Right now, a couple things I can do with that. I'm replying to this conversation here. I'm just replying in plain text. If I want to format it a little bit, I can click this little format button. And I can bold, italicize, I can insert links, I can do all those things like that. You know? Uh, one of the important things you need to know how to do is how to mention somebody or tag somebody. So when you tag people, they get a direct notification. So you're almost guaranteed that they're going to see what you want. So I would say, at sign, um, Joseph Henry test. Perfect. Now that's going to send him a notification. It is due tomorrow at 1 p.m. or whatever the time may be. A couple other things here you can do. There is emojis, which I can access. There is GIFs or GIFs, whatever you want to call them, which you can say, which you can add. You know, here's a cat jumping at a, or a dog jumping at a pumpkin. Uh, there's some stickers we can apply, right? So this is where you can get a little bit fun. But we also don't want to take advantage. As instructors, we can turn that off and de uh, deactivate the feature. So, you know, I could say, yes, I do. There it is. All good to go. Now, another couple features within this uh, channel. If I want to start a new conversation, I can do that. You know, I can say, okay, uh, question number two on assignment. Maybe I want to say, hello, everyone having trouble with question two. Can anyone help? You know? Now what you can do here to ensure that everybody gets that notification is you can actually tag the entire group. So I'm gonna tag electrical school team. Now everybody within that team gets the notification. So kind of interesting what you can do there. And again, I have all the same features as well at the bottom, emojis and stickers and GIFs. So that's called a new conversation. And then I can now go back to this conversation and reply or people can reply directly to this conversation. The last thing I wanna show you while we're inside this student cafe is up here in the top, I can actually have a meeting 
so I can open up a live video meeting with my classmates whenever I want in this channel, right? So really good to work on different projects or things like that. So uh, let's jump out of here and let's take a look in the code channel. So in the code channel is where we've got a lot of stuff happening. Uh, this is where you'll see basically everything to do with code. So I can see uh, if there is any files They'll be in the top in this folder here. There's no files. This is a new course. Uh, different lecture notes may appear as well, and we'll kind of talk about that notebook a little bit later on. But the main thing is this feed. So all of my separate code meetings, you know, I've got one Tuesday at 1, I've got one Wednesday, I've got one Friday. They'll all appear here. And during the meeting, all of the chat and video recordings and files and everything will actually be contained within this one conversation. So that's pretty good that I can see that. Any uh, br um, teams posted assignments or homework check will be also visible here. So that's kind of how everything will be separated to different courses. You may see some of these as breakout rooms as well. Well Teams is working on the new breakout rooms feature. So let's jump over here into the other features that we have. There is this assignments tab. Now your instructor may or may not use this assignments tab. It's really up to them, um, depending on the learning management system that you're using. Uh, but if you did use Teams assignments or quizzes, they would be under this tab. Uh, here you can see them, You know all the information about them. Open them up. There'll be a spot to add your work where you can click that and simply upload a file either from your OneDrive or from your computer or you can link it to something else or upload from your computer. Uh, so that's how you would upload your work and then turn it in. So pretty straightforward on the assignments. Uh, one of the most useful tools in my opinion I think is gonna be the calendar. So with the calendar, we open up the calendar. There's just a couple canceled lectures from this week. That was just me playing around. But let's say next week, is when my classes actually start. So you will see your calendar here populated. The same as your calendar in Outlook. The two are linked together. This is gonna be the best place in order to join into meetings. So let's say this is actually, you know, Monday morning. Or sorry, um, Tuesday afternoon. And we want to join into the meeting. So it's it's, you know, Tuesday afternoon, almost one o'clock, here in my calendar, when I go into my calendar, I can actually join that meeting right from here. It's a lot easier to find it here than it is within the channel, so I like to use the calendar. You know, I can open up the meeting, see what's going on. I can RSVP from here. Yes, I'm gonna be at the meeting. Oh, let's join the meeting. Now you see what the meeting experience looks like. So when I'm having a meeting or I'm participating in a meeting, this view is huge. So when you first join the meeting, up pops this screen right here. This is your picture, which we'll talk about in a little bit changing. Here you have the option to turn on your camera. Uh, or off your camera. Not sure why mine's not working right now. Microphone on or off. It's really customary to join the meeting with your mic and your camera off and then just turn them on as you need them. Uh, some instructors are going to want you to have them on and some won't. So let's join the meeting. Oh, now you can see here. So Zach Hartle, the instructor, he's already in the meeting. I try and talk and it tells me my microphone is muted and that's okay. But what we see here is the meeting screen. Now there's some important controls here. So up in the top, you can see the participants. This is everybody who's participating within the meeting. Uh, right from there, if you want to keep looking at someone, you can spotlight them or pin them. There's also the chat function or a chat happening within the meeting. So here we see the chat. You know, the instructor might throw something in there. So the instructor says something. There he is. You can respond to that directly just by putting your mouse over it and saying, you know, star or something like that. Or, you know, if, if it's appropriate, your instructor might say something like, hey, everyone, you know, if you're paying attention, give me a, a dancing penguin. Well, you can go in there 
and you can do that or you can say something like oh give me a star if you're if it makes sense right so you can do that if you need to if it's appropriate a really cool function within the, function within this meeting as well is the raise your hand function so I can put up my hand that means and then the instructor is actually going to get a little bit notification with the hand raised so with the hand raised, the instructor knows you have a question, then they might say, hey, uh, Michael, what's your question? And then you can kind of talk and go from there, right? So it's just a good way to get the attention of the instructor. Then when you're done, you just click that button again to lower your hand. Uh, there's your microphone and camera button as well. Uh, if you're having a, you know, maybe a more private meeting and you want to share your screen with someone, you can share your screen as well by clicking share content. And then there's these more options here. So you can device settings is your, you know, what speakers are you using? What microphone are you using? Um, there's some different meeting details, different views, which you can play around with. You can enter full screen. You can uh, apply a background effect. So it'll blur your background or you can put yourself in a classroom or something like that. Closed captioning. Um, start recording. As an instructor, I would ask that you don't ever start the recording. If you want the lecture to be recorded, that's up to your instructor. They can deal with that. Or you can turn off incoming video. Now this one's good if you have really low bandwidth and you just want to listen. You can turn off everybody's incoming video and that'll be good. One other thing you're going to want to do when you are done is you are going to want to click leave meeting. You don't want to let this meeting keep running forever. So once I'm done, I've watched it all, it's all good, I'm going to leave the meeting. Right, so now I've left the meeting and that's all good. It looks like the meeting has come to an end anyways. Right, now the meeting is no longer says join, so nobody's in that meeting anymore and that's great. Now what's cool is I can if I want to see the meeting details, you know, let's say it's the next day, I can come back to that meeting and I can double click it and it's going to open up all of the meeting details, right? So I can see what was happening. I can also go to the chat and I can see all of the chat that happened within the meeting. Now, the nice thing here is if the meeting was recorded and I was unable to see it, you will be able to access that recording within the chat. So if it was a recorded session, you can access it through there. The other place I can access it would be going back to Teams into that code channel. And you can see there it is. And once that recording finishes uploading to the server, I can view that recording there as well. All right, so some pretty interesting features that we have there. And that's how your meeting um, look, your meeting view. Last thing I want to talk about is the notebook. Um, I think the last thing. <laughs> so with the notebook, and this will depend whether your instructor sets this up or uses it or not. We have two more things to talk about. Uh, the notebook. So here I am in my code class. At the top, I see those tabs, right? What your instructor may have set up under the general tab is called a class notebook. Now, class notebook's pretty cool because I can go into that class notebook, and if I download one note, to my computer or use OneNote online. I'll have access to this as well. Um, but basically, here I have my own personal notebook with class notes, handouts, homework, quiz, however I set it up. Plus I have access to this content library, which is where my instructors are gonna populate info. So oh, here's a class schedule, some things like that. There's also this collaboration space, you know, where my code instructor might take some notes, my theory instructor might take some notes, so if your instructor is utilizing this notebook, this is kind of how you access the whole thing. Or if you're within an individual course, like I am here in code, just up at the top, I can click on this notes button. That notes is going to open up just the code collaboration notes. And again, get your little bit more info from your instructor, whether they're allowing you to collaborate on these notebooks or not. But what I always think is best with these is if I just click open in browser, you can actually open it up in your browser and it works quite a bit better, I find, in the browser 
or in the desktop app than it does within Teams, right? So pretty good place to keep those notes. Last thing I wanna to touch on, uh, I hope, or possibly, is just this chat uh, function. Uh, so the chat is kind of like our instant messaging, our direct messaging with each other. So when you come into chat, you know, I don't have any chats here, but let's say I needed to reach out to my instructor. I have two a op couple options. I could email them, right? Instructors will probably prefer you to use your student email if possible. Just works better with our uh, firewall and stuff like that. It just ensures we get the email. Uh, but here I can go at the top. I can start a new chat. You know, I can chat with Zach Hartle, my instructor. And, you know, I can say, uh, hi, Zach. Sorry, but I will be late for class today. Dentist appointment. And you can send that to Zach. And then Zach's going to get that message instantly, right? And of course they can, uh, you know, they'll probably just give you a quick thumbs up or something like that. Oh, he saw it and he provided me with a thumbs up. Awesome. You can also use this to talk to other students. So I can talk to my friend Joseph. Uh, and I can add some other people to the chat too. If there was multiple students in the class, I can have kind of a group chat going on. And you can do everything within the chat that you can do elsewhere. I can click the uh, schedule a meeting button down at the bottom and I can actually meet or I can just click up here, hit call and this will video call or audio call my class. I can add people as well or pop it out into a separate window so I can keep it open on a different screen, right? So lots of different options within the chat. Probably your easiest and quickest uh, way to communicate is through the chat. There is the call button as well. Again, kind of like phone calls are becoming these days. Reserve that for emergencies or whatever. The best idea is usually just to use that chat function. So that's kind of bringing us up to the last couple things that I wanna cover. Um, one of them being this last tab here that we haven't covered is the activity tab. Now this activity tab is basically just a list of all your, your notifications, just like you'd have on your phone, you know, it, it tells you when anybody at mentions you, uh, it tells you when you're added to new groups, uh, it tells you if people have replied to conversations you're a part of, or especially if people react to your messages. So here you can see Zach gave you that thumbs up without going back into chat and opening up the chat. I can just see quickly those uh, reactions, right? Now, the last kind of step here is we want to make this as personable or personal as possible, right? I mean, we're not sitting face to face anymore. And realistically, you're not going to have your camera on 100% of the time. And, you know, putting a name and face together often just can help us. So I just want to quickly cover how to upload a profile picture. Uh, so up in this corner here where I see my initials, uh, Michael Faraday, MF. I'm gonna click on that. Here I have a couple different options. So this status option is a good one, right? If you're available and working, you can set it to available. If, if you just need a couple hours away from any notifications or any dings, you can turn it to do not disturb or be right back or appear away. So you can kind of set your status, you know, uh, old school MSN messenger style, uh, or you can hit reset your status. And when you reset your status, it'll just link to your calendar. So if you're in a meeting, it'll say, in a meeting, if you're in a call, it'll say in a call. If you're free, it'll say available. Uh, you can also, again, here adjust your different settings within Teams, uh, different privacy. Notification settings is an absolute huge one. How many notifications do I want to receive? Um, you, do you want any emails? I personally don't want any emails from Teams, so I like to change that. Uh, those are just some of the main ones you might want to look at. Uh, another way to change your notifications while we're on the topic is over here in the Teams tab. In each channel, you can adjust your notifications. So I can press, press these ellipses here and I can say, okay, in code, well, I want to get notified of nothing or I want to get notified of custom. That's where you would set them in your settings. Uh, you can also hide a channel if you don't use it, things like that. So back up to the top here. Very last thing, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, you can change your picture. Now, as an instructor, I'm hoping that you will do this. I really like to see, just give me a picture of your face, you know, petting your dog, whatever 
the situation may be on a cool travel, anything like that. Just a quick picture. Uh, so here I am. Oh, here's my selfie. Oh, I have a picture of my friend, you know, Joseph, but here's my selfie. So I'm going to upload that picture and it simply just makes it a little bit more personal as we are within the chat and things like that. So now when I talk to people, they'll see that little picture, uh, just a little touch to be a little bit more personal. Um, now that does bring us to the end of this video. Um, so now that we're done here, let's turn around and have a chat. Okay. Well, that kind of sums up everything that we wanted to talk about today. Um, I really do appreciate you watching. Thank you for taking the time. I know this was a little bit longer of a video, but hopefully that you learned something. Your best step now is just to jump onto your computer uh, and practice on Microsoft Teams, right? Jump into the software, play around, see what you can do, update that profile picture, uh, jump into the calendar, take a look at the events that are upcoming. It's such a powerful tool and resource, Microsoft Teams, that used in conjunction with your learning management software. In my case, it's gonna be Brightspace or D2L. Um, it's just such a powerful tool. We can really create that online environment, right? Participate in the student cafe. Join in on conversations. Use the chat. If your instructors want you to, throw your camera on. Feel like you're a part of that group. Uh, turn your mic on, answer, ask questions, right? Just get as involved as you can in order to get the absolute most out of your learning experience. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if there's some other videos on my channel that could help you out, I do have some that are all about Microsoft Office 365. So please take a look at those as well as some other learning online videos. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all online. Have an awesome day.